Hello and welcome to episode number 358. This is the Project Management Podcast at pm-podcast.com and I'm Cornelius Fichtner. Before we start, please don't forget that we are a listener-supported podcast. If you enjoy our interviews, then please visit pm-podcast.com slash premium. Your subscription will help keep us going. The Work Breakdown Structure is a powerful project management planning and controlling tool. It is the backbone to planning and managing scope on any project. And, as you will hear in our interview, every ship repair project must have it. Are you PMP certified and want to earn 37 PDUs quickly and for less than $5 per hour? That's no problem with the Agile PrepCast. It not only prepares you for your PMI ACP exam, but also qualifies for a ton of PMP PDUs. Visit agileprepcast.com slash PDU for the details. Fernando Remolina is a project management professional and works for the Curaçao Dry Dock Company in ship repair, engineering and ship conversion. In his many years of working in shipyard project management, he realized that managing the scope is both central and vital and that the WBS is the tool to use. And his successful projects are the proof. So he set out to help others in his industry and wrote the article WBS for Ship Repair Projects. But here is the good news. First of all, his article offers a fascinating look at shipbuilding project management. And second, his review of how to apply and use a WBS can easily be applied to many other types of projects and industries. So let's cast off. Enjoy the interview. The Project Management Podcasts feature interview. Today with Fernando Remolina, Project Manager at Curacao Dry Dock Company, Project Management Author and Public Speaker. Hello, Fernando. Welcome to the program. Hi, Cornelius. Thank you for inviting me to this interview. For me, it's a pleasure. Oh, wonderful. Hey, before we get started, uh, let me ask you a fun question, though, because it's in the Caribbean. It's just north of, north of Venezuela. What is it like to live in a paradise, or at least what many of us who live on a big continent think, you know, Curaçao, that has to be a paradise. What is it like to live there? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Curaçao is an island located in the Caribbean and is part of the Netherlands Kingdom. Living here is like a never-ending vacation. The sun is always shining. In a few minutes driving, you can get crystal clear water beaches and all kinds of restaurants. In general, Cornelius, it's amazing. Okay, we are now all officially jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and shipping is, uh, the shipping services, that is one of the major industries, right? Yeah, right. Curacao has three major industries where ships are involved. As Curacao is an island, normally all the goods are shipped by sea, so mm -hmm. it has a container port. In the other hand, the island also have a refinery where ships arrive for oil loading and unloading. And of course, the last but not least, we have the shipyard for ship repairs. Okay. And what prompted you to write an article about using a WBS, a work breakdown structure, for ship repair projects? What was the reason for this? You know, Cornelius, I have a personal mission in the ship repair industry. I have been working on this industry for almost 10 years. And since five years ago, when I got my PMP certification, I started to apply the PMI standard to my projects, realizing that they were more organized, finishing on time and on budget. I have worked for three different shipyards so far, and none of them has used a recognized project management standard. But don't get me wrong, they have set their own project management process, but probably other shipyards in the world do so. My intention is to show the professionals who work for the, uh, in this industry that you can apply all the project management tools and have successful projects. Yeah. So to recap for everybody, would you please remind us, what is a WBS? What is a work breakdown structure? Yes, of course. The PM book has a formal definition for the WBS. 
But here, I want to bring forward also the definition from the author of the book, Secrets to Mastering the WBS in Real World Projects, written by Liliana Bostik. I want to mix both of them. So my mixed definition is a WBS is a hierarchical decomposition that tells you what to deliver in the project, not the when or how to deliver. So the when and the how are part of the schedule, actually. The how are the activities and the task relationships. And the when is the activity durations in a time frame. So you need both of them, the when and the how, to achieve the what, that's mean the scope that you have in the WBS. Okay, so very important to remember this factor. You also stress that in your article, the WBS then doesn't tell us the how or the when of what we deliver. Why is that? Why doesn't the WBS tell us that? Yes, exactly. As I mentioned, the what is the scope and the when and how are part of the schedule. So the how are the activities and the task relationship between them. And the when is the activity durations that you set in a time frame. So you need both of them to achieve the what. And the what is the scope stated in the WBS. Okay, so so much for the theory. Now let's move on into using the WBS actually on a ship repair project. Uh, what, is the, what are some of the top benefits that make the WBS so useful for ship repair? Okay, well, here we have uh, the number one is to define the scope. This is the normal benefit that you get from a WBS. Also, you can apply for the ship repair. The number two is to create a logic schedule. Later, I will explain how you use this to create a logic schedule. And the number three is to set project priorities. Also very important for me, when I have the WBS, I can see all the scope and I can start to set priorities and then I will use it this in the schedule. Is it possible to perform a ship repair without a WBS? Uh, actually, for me personally, it is not possible to perform a ship repair without a WBS. But, Why is that? Yeah, because you need it. Of course, you need to see your scope. You need to, this is a kind of graphically way to see the scope. But let me tell you something, Cornelius. In the beginning of my career as a project manager, I did many projects without a WBS. So at the end, it is possible, but not correct. Okay. So now we want to look at the four steps that you suggest in your article of how to use the WBS in a ship repair project. Step one is collect input documents. What are these documents that we collect? Yeah, here we have uh, two documents. One is the tender and the other one is the requirement list. The tender, Cornelius, is a document that comes from the commercial department and is handed over to the assigned project manager. The tender contains the job list with a description and the prices for each job, but in a random order. To refer this document into project management language, I can say it's like a so statement of work. Then we have the requirement list, and this requirement list has been created by me, actually, in order to control the project activities. But then I start to improve it with every project, and now it's a very important document for planning and controlling. Why for planning? Because I transfer the information from the tender to the Excel file with more relevant information, so my WBS can be done easier for controlling, because this is my checklist when I go on board for daily meetings with my client and project team. What exactly do we do with these documents? I mean, the step says collect input documents. Do we just gather them and put them in a binder? Or is there, a, is there an analysis that we do? Do we read them? Do we disseminate them somehow? Exactly. You have to analyze it and keep it nearby. Because without those documents, you cannot create a WBS for the project. These documents okay. are the requirements, so you need it. You need to organize it in such way, and you organize it with the requirement list, and then you can create the WBS. Right, and these documents are needed so that we can later on develop the WBS. Exactly. Are very, okay. very important. 
All right. Step two, divide the ship per location and systems. Okay, I'm, I'm, I have never worked on a ship, so can you first explain what do you mean by location and systems for someone like myself who has no background in the shipping industry whatsoever? Actually, to divide the ship per locations and systems is like to divide the project into projects in such a mm -hmm. way you can manage them better. For example, in a house building project, let's take a very simple and common example, a house building project. You can divide it per locations. That means you can have the master room, living room, main bathroom, kitchen, etc. But then also you can have systems in that house that can be electrical system, boiling system, drain, sewage, etc. So that you can organize the project in such way depending on the job requested by the client. So you will see, you will receive, you will see the analyze all the requirements and you start to define if you need to put it per location or per system. Always thinking about the schedule. Do we have to do both? Do we have to do it by location and system or is there one preferred way? Yeah, that depends on the requirements, Cornelius. Um, then you have to analyze what you have, and then you will decide if you'll take it per locations and, or system. Just so I, I can give you an example with the ships. Example, if I have the engine room where the main engine, big engine mm -hmm. of the ship is located, but over there you can have some mechanical jobs, you can have some steel jobs, you can have some cleaning jobs. So for me, this will be a location. The engine room is one of the big deliverables. Then you have to finish all the tasks that I mentioned. So that area, that big deliverable or that sub-project is finished. But for example, let's talk about the same main engine room. Maybe the client requests to work on the main engine. And the, on the main engine, you can have valve, you can have pipes, you can have painting. So this will be a system because the main engine is a system. So I need to coordinate that special system in such a way to avoid interferences or safety issues, things like that. So that's basically the idea to divide it per location or systems. Mm -hmm. And of course, everything overlaps, like you have just explained. The engine is in the engine room, so location and systems overlap. Are we talking about sub-projects here? Yes, actually... We can talk about sub-projects, but just thinking about scheduling and a scope. Not actually that you have to create, for example, according to PMI standard, to create a project charter and separate WBS and separate the schedule. That's not the intention. I just call it sub-project because you have to see it in the way you can schedule and avoid interference and that overlapping. So you need to do it in such a good sequence. Absolutely. So we are talking more about developing the work packages for the WBS based on locations, based on systems, and potentially creating those work packages based on sub-projects as well. Exactly. Okay. All right. So those were the first two steps. Collect input documents and then divide the ship per location and systems. The third step is define the software to be used. Do you have any specific criteria for us on how you select the software? Well, Cornelius, my recommendation is to use a software that is compatible with your scheduling software. If not, then you will spend a lot of time passing over that information from the WBS to a schedule. Personally, I use the WBS Sharp Pro for WBS creation, and this is integrated with the MS project. So I export all the deliverables from the WBS to MS project, and there I can start to add the activities, duration, task relationship. Actually, to work like this is very easy. So we've got everything, we have the software, and of course now the next step is create the WBS. What's involved in doing this? Okay, um, there is no formal meeting to for WBS elaboration. The things that you need are only the input documents, industry knowledge, and the software. Not much is involved here. 
Okay. And who exactly does this? Because frankly, if you gave me the software and said, create the WBS, I would be terribly lost. To me, the person who is responsible to create the WBS, they have to have a lot of experience in the shipping industry. Exactly. The responsible is the project manager. And some project team members can also collaborate. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have master WBS elaboration, as you said, because in ship repair projects, in one year, you can make like minimum 16 WBS. So for me, it's wow. very, yeah. so for me, it's very easy and it doesn't take too long time to create it. Of course, you need to have knowledge and experience in this kind of industry. Okay. And, and when you say 16 WBSs, that also means you are repairing 16 different ships, right? Exactly. Minimum 16 ships per year. 16 ships. So that's roughly three to four weeks uh, for, uh, for a repair. Exactly. Okay. How long does it usually take you to perform these four steps that we have just heard? Yeah, to per perform these uh, four steps can take from three to four days. Oh, okay. So it's, it's quite a substantial amount of planning ahead of time, considering that, you know, the whole project will take you three to four weeks to complete if you want to do, you know, 16 repairs. How many work packages at the lowest level in the WBS do you normally have for ship repair? Yeah, for complex projects, I can reach five levels of decomposition. Okay. Five levels deep. And, and how, many, how many activities or rather work packages do you have at the lowest level there? So, yeah, it can be per work package, can be 10 activities. In total, okay. the complete project, I can have 300 activities, 300 lines in the MS project. Okay. Quite, quite yeah. complex. Yeah. As we learned in the beginning, the WBS only gives us the what. So how do we integrate all the information that we have now created into the project schedule. This is the main issue of WBS creation. Because when I start to create the WBS, I immediately think about the schedule. So I organize it in such a way I can easily define activities and do the sequencing in the schedule. When you divide the ship into locations and system, the schedule will be easier and effective. When you have Cornelius in, in a ship, you can have actually 100 workers at the same time all around the vessel. And that you have to coordinate this task properly to avoid interference, as I mentioned before, and to avoid safety issues and still finishing on time. So Yeah, I was just going to say because... So far, we have just created the WBS. Somebody actually has to go and, you know, complete these work packages, right? So you're saying 100 people are out there. Exactly. Can be 100 people all around the vessel performing any kind of task, painting, welding, mechanics, all the things. So okay. the real work is done by, by, the, by the project team and, and the workers. Huh? Okay. So we have several hundred work packages on the WBS. I assume that would lead to several thousand individual tasks that need to be completed for the ship repair. Exactly. For more complex projects, it's like that. Yeah. A WBS is a document. It's static. But, you know, things change constantly. We know that. We're project managers. How many times... Do you need to review and update your WBS during the actual project? Well, Cornelius, every time I have a formal change in the project, we each call in this industry additional job. And this can happen a lot of times. Actually, it can <laughs> happen from 8 to 20 times to 25 times each project in a 10 to 12 days. So you can imagine that. <laughs> Right. So basically, you have one change request a day, which means you have to go back to the WBS, which then changes the WBS, which changes the schedule, which... So you have a whole avalanche happening right there and then. Exactly. You have immediately yeah. to analyze what will be the impact of that additional job. That's, uh, that's a must. Okay. So all of this is extremely interesting, and it's fascinating to hear you talk about, about your industry. But... I assume that, just like me, uh, only a small number of our listeners are really involved in projects that are similar to yours. Do you think that your approach that you explain in the article, 
is useful to other industries? Yes, of course. Any industry that receives any requirement for repairing, maintaining can be facilities, equipment, goods in general. This can be applied. It even can be used in the construction industry if you want. So, Fernando, in closing, how do you recommend that our listeners take your general concepts and ideas from the article and adapt them to their own industry? The best way, Cornelius, is trying and practicing the steps stated on my article that can be adjusted to their own industry. If you don't try it, it simply won't happen. All right. And of course, we are going to have a link to this article on the website pm-podcast.com. So please, everybody, stop by, click on the article, read the article, look at the steps, look at Fernando's recommendations. Thank you so much for your time today. That was very interesting, Fernando. I appreciate your time. Okay. Thanks to you, Cornelius. And that was our interview with Fernando Remolina Gonzalez and why and how to use a work breakdown structure. Please don't forget that if you are PMP certified and would like to earn 37 PDUs, to visit agileprepcast.com slash PDUs and learn about all the great PDUs that you can learn as well as prepare for your PMI ACP exam. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening. As always, you can find us on the web at pm-podcast.com. Please send your emails to info at pm-podcast.com. And when you write, please tell me where in the world you are writing from. And finally, we have this. Do not repeat the tactics which have gained you one victory, but let your methods be regulated by the infinite variety of circumstances. Until next time.